In today's video, we're taking a look at five of the new features that I really like in the 2025.4 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. 2025.4 is packed full of new features, new voice enhancements, and lots of dashboard changes. The full release for this update will release on April 2nd, but if you are interested in checking it out early, I'll leave a link to the full beta release notes in the description below, and you are free to join the beta and help contribute if that's something that you're interested in doing. So with that said, let's check out my first feature. My first feature is probably my favourite feature throughout their entire update, and it's essentially the foundations for what is voice assistant interactions, which basically is what gives you that two-way feel between you and your voice assistant. Let me show you a quick demo. The office door has been left unlocked. Should I lock it for you? Yes. The workshop door is now securely locked. Your fortress is safe. If there's anything else you need, just let me know. This new feature allows you to build your own automations that will initiate interactions from your voice assistant instead of you having to trigger the conversation by saying a wake word. As I said, this is the foundations of this feature, so do expect it to get better over time. There's still a lot of refinements to be made, but again, we're early days and this is a great step forward for Home Assistant Voice. At the time of recording, this feature only works with LLMs, but Home Assistant are working to make this available for other use cases. In the little clip I showed you, you may have also heard that little pre-announcement sound. And this sound is actually fully customizable, so you can have this be whatever sound you want. And you also have the option of disabling the sound if you don't want any sound to play. Looks like you missed the train. Should I tell you when the next one is? You're out of toilet roll. Should I order some? There's so many things that you can do with this feature and so much potential for it, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what crazy things the community does with it. It looks like the workshop door is unlocked. Should I kill the inhabitants or just lock the door? Yes. Killing would have been preferable. The door is now locked. Moving away from voice then, we've got our second feature, and it's the highly requested backup sensor. Since the release of backups, lots of people have requested to have a backup sensor, and it's finally here. Using these new sensors, you can create some nice visual representations of your backup statuses, and you can also make use of that state within your different automations and scripts to automate based on the state of a backup. Up next, we've got our third feature, and it's the brand new area dashboard. Area dashboards are a brand new experimental dashboard, which in the future may one day replace the overview dashboard. And I'm definitely down for this because I personally do not like that overview dashboard. These new dashboards generate a page for each area in your home by making use of tile cards. And for this to work effectively, you do need to have at least categorized your devices to set areas and not be one of those crazy people that just don't organize anything. With these dashboards, the devices will try and organize themselves appropriately, but you do have full control over the positions and also of what is and isn't shown. Some of the other key features of this dashboard are the fact that devices will appear automatically on a page when they get added to an area. So if you add a new device and assign it an area, it should automatically appear on that dashboard page. If you do start playing around and building your own area dashboards, do be aware that this is experimental. So over the next couple of releases, do expect a lot of changes and things may move around or even break the current dashboards that you create. So it's experimental. Staying on topic with dashboard and dashboard design, our fourth new feature is a brand new tile card and it's the clock card. This brand new card is a simple but very convenient way to add a clock to your dashboard natively. The clock card supports a few different formats and it's also resizable to fit on your various dashboards. Over the next couple of releases, I also expect that this card's going to receive updates based on community feedback and there'll probably be lots of cool and weird and wonderful things that you can do with a clock. My fifth and final feature for this update then is cloud onboarding. If you're starting a new Home Assistant instance, maybe you've had a really big failure or maybe you're just upgrading to some brand new hardware, 
then when you actually run through the onboarding process, you have the option of signing into your Home Assistant Cloud account and actually restoring your backup directly from the cloud. This gives the whole onboarding process that Apple-like feel where you just restore from a backup and everything is as you left it. I remember talking about this feature when cloud backups were first introduced, so it's great to see it's finally here and it just makes it so easy and so convenient to actually just move to new hardware or even just restore your system. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five of the new features that I really like. This update is full of lots of cool features. Some of the ones that I didn't mention are things like remote calendar URLs, so you can easily set up calendars in Home Assistant using a URL. And also entity breadcrumbs. Using entity breadcrumbs, you can easily identify where an entity came from and what it belongs to, and it just makes it really easy to see what things are. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.